All right, now we're at the soldering station, ready to do the repair work on the power supply. Uh, to do it, you will need diagonal cutters, desolder wick to suck up the old solder, some lead-free solder to solder the capacitors in, soldering iron, and of course the capacitor kit with the values that we're going to be replacing. Um, first thing you need to do, of course, is remove the capacitors off of the old board. Um, you use the soldering iron and the desolder wick to do that. And basically what, what you'll be doing is you put the solder wick on one of the legs of the capacitor and you apply the soldering iron. The solder will melt and be basically absorbed or wicked up into the solder wick to free that leg from the board. Once you do one, then you go to the next one. And then we should be able to just remove the capacitor. And we need to do that for all of the ones on the board that we're going to be replacing. Now each capacitor on the board is going to have a small number beside it telling you the designation or the, the parts designation, not necessarily the value designation of the capacitor. So as you're taking them off, uh, you can write down the location and the value of that particular capacitor so that you'll know which ones to put back in um, when you're ready to you know, get to that stage. We're familiar with doing this, so we're just going to go ahead and remove all the capacitors off the board that we will be replacing. Two more, two of the, of the small ones. And one last capacitor. Sometimes on the small ones, they're actually harder to get off than the big ones, um, because in, uh, during the um, installation of them, they bend the legs over further on them than they do on the larger ones. All right, now we have the capacitors fully removed from the board. Now we're ready to start populating with the replacement capacitors. Now if you notice on the board, on the circles where the capacitors came off from, one side is dark and one side is light. The dark side is the negative side. And then if you look on the capacitors, one side has a gray stripe with a little negative symbol. That's also the negative side of the capacitor. So when you install the leads, you just want to make sure that you put the negative lead of the capacitor going through the hole on the negative side of the board. And we flip it over and you just spread the legs to the side a little bit. 
and we go to the next capacitor that we want to put in. Again, just make sure that you have you know negative to negative as you're installing them all, and you should be good to go. We're stressing that because if you do put them in to install the capacitors in backwards, um, as soon as you power up the unit, the new capacitor that you just installed will short out and uh, then you'll have to replace the new one that you just put in. So I said just make sure, that, you know, same as working with wood and so forth, uh, measure twice, cut once. Well, same thing with this. Make sure that you have the capacitors installed correctly before you do the soldering. out here. Alright, now we have the board populated. Now we need to go back and solder the new ones in. To do the soldering, you just take your soldering iron, apply it to one of the legs, and then touch a little bit of solder to it. The solder will melt and make a nice shiny connection. If it does not make a nice bright shiny connection, that's what's called a cold solder joint, and you need to retry the soldering again. Just heat up the, the solder until it melts and then remove the soldering iron and let it cool down um, until you get a bright shiny connection. Now you do need to make sure that you are using the right capacitors for this repair. Um, standard capacitors from a store like a Radio Shack or a local electronics store probably are not going to work. Um, they need to be what are called low ESR, which is equivalent series resistance. They need to be high temperature and high ripple current rated. If they are not, uh, they will die very quick and could potentially damage some of the other components on the board. So you want to make sure that you are using the right parts for the repair. Like I said, we have, we do have the correct parts in the repair kit that is available at the link below. Uh, that way you don't have to worry about am I getting the right values or ratings or even sizes because there's several different sizes, physical sizes, for the capacitors available. Like I said, we already have them pre-set up um, so that you don't have to worry about that. All right, now we have all the capacitors replaced on the board. Uh, the board should be functional, and we'll take it back over to the monitor and plug it in and test it out just to make sure. So here we go.